Garcia. It is game six, Philadelphia against Portland. On your screen, Irving, McGinnis, Jones, Collins, and Bibby matched against Gross, Lucas, Walton, Collins, and Davis. The situation is quite simple. Portland leads this series three games to two. Philadelphia must win to force a seventh game Wednesday night back in the spectrum. Philadelphia will have control. Again, we have this time a reverse situation on the opening tap. French Philadelphia has got to come out and be more aggressive like they were in the first two ball games. That's probably been their biggest demise now. They have just not been aggressive defensively. Game five, Walton had a problem on the tap and it went to Philly. Here it is, the 76ers. So the Blazers come with control. McGinnis is down. Lucas. The second violation. On the three-second violation, the 76ers will come down. Caldwell Jones handling in the backcourt. Keep an eye on Bill Walton, number 32, away from the ball when Jones does not have it. He has been a key defensive force so far in this city. McGinnis with the first shot. Hit his first field goal attempt. Bibby is entangled with Lucas, who throws him off. Bibby is up. At the other end, close ties the game. Now it's back to Henry Bibby. Lucas, of course, obviously is down there. The two are wrapped up in each other's arms. And the turns it over, and the ball goes to Portland. But it from Bibby on Hollins. Davis will come up. Collins awaits him. Guinness on Lucas, and here is Walton waiting for the cutter. It's gross. Bobby Gross picking up where he left off in game number five. Brent scoring two quick passes. He had 25 in that one, and he fouled out. From time to time, you'll see flashes on your screen. Don't be concerned. A lot of photographers here with flash balls. McGinnis comes left baseline on Lucas, and he's hit his first two field goals. He has shot but 33% in this series so far. And it goes over to Philadelphia with the score tied at four. As game six begins in the Memorial Coliseum, and Coach Gene Shue, suffering from a bad head cold today, sits back down. McGinnis starts his drive, and Lucas was there. Jake O'Donnell, one of the referees, took a blow, fell down over the end of the court. Brent, one thing George cannot try to do is try to do everything too soon. He's hit his first two shots. He's got to build his confidence up, but he can't do it by himself. McGinnis behind the Jones screen. He's three out of three off the top of this game. Two outside shots and one inside. It is 6-4. McGinnis leads Gross. Lucas had it knocked away by McGinnis. Lucas complaining that he was fouled. It'll go back to Portland. Let's take a look at the play here. He makes the fake. George goes up a little and tries to go by him. He reaches around him. Lucas may have had a legitimate complaint. Couldn't really see for sure from this angle. The finals of the slam dunk competition live from Portland at halftime. Darnell Hillman and Larry McNeil. Come up the other way. You can see the signal from O'Donnell. Six to four, 76ers lead the Blazers. Walton in the middle, Jones passes inside to the doctor, and then Walton got back to clean up after the miss. Collins, Bibby in behind him, and here's Davis coming into Collins. Lucas moves the ball to line of Hollins, and it was Collins has tied it. Billy playing tough off the top of this game, which is something they must do. They must not lose contact here early in Portland. Walton switches out on Irving. McGinnis 3-3 three three with his fourth shot and a miss. Another defensive rebound for Walton. Goes back to Walton on the drive through. Tap back Davis will control it. A second shot for Portland. Score is tied at six. Lucas up over McGinnis. There was a whistle. This crowd is so noisy you can't even hear the whistles in here. That's for sure. They are really pumped up. Uh, they were going from about five minutes before the horn. They haven't stopped yet as George McGinnis picks up his first foul. Right after this game, the final round of the Kemper Open from Charlotte, North Carolina. We'll have a report here at halftime. Daryl Dawkins sitting alongside Gene Shue over on the Philadelphia bench. Brent, I don't think I can remember seeing Philadelphia so up in warm-ups. 
They were going through their dunking routine, but there was a lot of enthusiasm. I've never seen Dr. J so up. He was clapping his hands, trying to get everybody pumped up. Blazers lead them right now, Rick. 8-6, 9-26. McGinnis, 3 of 4 early. Collins, Walton was there. The pass to Jones, who came up with a shot. Joe Bryant sitting back down. He's the head cheerleader, and he brought some enthusiasm into game five when it all seemed lost. Tied at eight now with 9-12 left in the first. Davis cuts, takes a beautiful pass. Give and go. Davis broke free from Doug Collins that time. They do that so well. McGinnis back with pressure. Jones took only one shot in game five. He shot twice already here in the first quarter. They must occupy Walton. They know it. Collins with a miss. Davis for three. Blazers up by two. Collins. I know Holland sits two for two from the same spot. There's a man that they need to get some offense from. He is one of the big keys for this Portland team. Four-point Blazer lead in the first quarter. Gross goes with him. Bibby down on the floor. Gave it up to Jones. Walton sagging way off. You can watch the shot clock go down. Bibby at the top of the circle. Bibby has also been in a shooting slump in this series. Both teams are off the cold starts in game five. Right now, they're both smoking, Brent. Lucas goes to Davis. Hits it outside. Back to four for Portland. Irving gets around Gross. Davis was there on the switch off. Pass out deep to Jones. Irving was looking for the foul. Left sideline, Collins. This is some pace they're off to, Brett. No way they can keep this up. It's a two-point Portland lead. Walton waits. Lucas did not expect the pass. Has control. Knocked away by Philly. Forced the turnover. Hit back by Lucas to Gross. Lucas and Jones gets up to Walton. will have an easy back. Lucky bounce that time for Portland. Portland is shooting seven of eight with 7.28, and Jack Ramsey can't improve upon that shooting. Gene Shoes sitting back down on the Philly bench. Double team on Irving. Pass goes to Jones. Walton's nowhere near him. Jones is now two or three, a definite change to the Philly attack. The center is going to take some shots. Davis cut off. It was Jones who moved in. Walton's there. It's five on five. Walton picks off Collins, and Jones jumps out on Lila Holland. So Caldwell Jones starting strong. Ball on the floor. Jones to the basket. The doctor is there. Offensive rebound, and he stuffs it in over Gross. Tied at 16. The 76ers respond with two hoops. They sure have, Brent. This is not the 76ers team we've watched the last three basketball games. And Caldwell Jones, the biggest difference I've seen so far. Walton tried to pass inside, was fouled by Caldwell that time. We've got a timeout here in Portland, but Rick, there is no question about Caldwell Jones' involvement right now. No question about it. And we see the play coming right here. Caldwell was really working hard. Walton with a good pass, good defense by Julius. The finals of Slam Dunk live at halftime and the Kemper Open final round immediately after this broadcast. These two teams are sizzling. 15 of 21. 78% for Portland, 7 of 9, 62% for Philadelphia, 8 of 13. And now, Rick Barry, we'll see if Walton makes any kind of defensive adjustment against Jones. I think he'll let him shoot a few more times. If he hits one or two more, he will go out on him again. Tied at 16, Hollins, his third field goal. Blazers up as Lionel Hollins has scored six in the first quarter. 6.22, Corky Calhoun has replaced Gross. He'll work on the doctor. Calhoun there. The doctor has nobody over there in the corner. They cut away from the pass on the turnover. Here come the Blazers, and Calhoun goes back to work on offense. He has hit some shots outside. And Philadelphia did not expect him to light him up out there. He's a defensive and a rebounding forward. Lucas, Irving matched against him, battling him. Lucas comes away with the shot. Jones off quickly to the doctor, and Davis cuts off the break. Seals him at the right sideline. Inside to McGinnis. And George McGinnis has scored four field goals, eight points in the first quarter. He held up trying to draw the foul. McGinnis is back on Lucas. Lucas up over the top of the miss. McGinnis off with a rebound. Gives it to Skibby. It's three on two. Here's McGinnis back now to Jones. 
This is Philadelphia finally establishing themselves, getting on the boards, getting the ball up the floor quickly. They are playing the way they must play to win in this series. 76ers sky high right now, but yet Portland only two back. Here's Calhoun, Irving with him. Walton waits. Caldwell Jones playing like a man on fire against the big redhead. Lucas outside. Jones off with another rebound. They must have that great game from the center because Walton can dominate at both ends. McGinnis waits, spots Jones. Walton goes with him. Jones up outside. Missed it as he shot over the basket that time. McGinnis ran it down. McGinnis back up. Off. Whistle was blown outside. Caldwell Jones, loose ball foul. That's his second. A very key statistic with the way he is playing early. Lloyd Neal in. Maurice Lucas takes a break with 4.55 to go. Gene Shu yelling something to Bibby. And Steve Mix will try it. I was at the Philadelphia practice yesterday. Mix was not there because of a reaction in that ankle to a pain-killing shot he took. He came out, tried it in warm-ups, went back in, and actually Stanley Lorber gave him another shot just a short time ago. But watch him very carefully, Rick. Great ankle looks awfully tight to me. Interesting statistic. Portland does not have a fast-break basket yet in this game. Jones right with Walton looking for the cutter. Davis. Walton backing in, coming up now, and the whistle was blown. No basket. Walton wanted the basket. That's three fouls on Caldwell Jones. There's the play again. Bill Walt with the ball. Watch Caldwell Jones bump him with the body right there. Again, he gets him with the body. And that were the, that's where the foul was. Blazers down by two. Hollins with three field goals goes to Collins. Walton, the wheel man. I'm sure we'll see Daryl Dockin soon with those three fouls on Jones. Davis pumps outside. Calhoun up over the top on Irving. And it went off of Calhoun's hands. It'll go to Julius Irving in the 76ers. There he is, number 53, 20-year-old Daryl Dawkins. Jones goes out with those three fouls, and now we'll see if Dawkins can pick up where Jones left off. Bill Walton, the main man for the Trailblazers, and what an effort it takes to contain him. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar did it for Los Angeles as they dueled each other, but the rest of the Blazers' cast was too strong. Mix up over Neal, and Mix has hit his first field goal. He's not, point for the lead. He's not running very good, but he sure shot that ball nicely. Collins there with Davis. Neal looks in. Dawkins is with Walton. Walton looks now. Can he get the cutter? The man inside. It's Davis knocked away by Mix. Off to Collins. Key play by Mix. Here's Bibby. Ran into the doctor. Lost control. Loose ball out of bounds. And it's going to go to Portland. Richie Powers, the lead official, made the call. Maurice Lucas took a blow in the neck. Has an ice pack. Trainer Ron Culp gave it to him. Assistant coach Jack McKinney alongside him. Bobby Gross back in the action. Calhoun is out. It's 22-18. Philadelphia. Doctor tried to steal it. Gross in a foot race, and here he comes. Doctor looks for daylight with meaning. He took that to the hoop. He is absolutely awesome in that type of a situation, Brent. Portland trailing by six. Gross waiting now, and here's Davis. Hollins with those three field goals. Davis maneuvering. He's got Walton who wants a jump shot off glass. Good shot. 24 to 20. And finally, we've got these two teams coming together and both playing as well as they can. Bibby outside to Irving. Here's Mix. Mix waits. Philadelphia sets a play. It's off to Dawkins from Mix. And Dawkins goes to the basket. And Steve Mix knew that Walton was on him and made a smart pass. Something Philly didn't do very much in the last three games, penetration. Philadelphia must win to force a game seven Wednesday night in the spectrum. We'd be there at 9 p.m. Eastern. Oh. Close underneath, reversal. 26-22. You can feel it in the air this afternoon in Portland. They have used all kinds of ploys to get vacant space in this arena. They are standing all over here in Portland. Julius Irving cut off. Neal there with him. Irving inside to Henry Bibby, who got loose underneath. No basket. No basket. Philadelphia has not gotten inside like this since game two back in the spectrum. That's exactly right, Brent. There's a three-second violation. That's why that basket did not count as we see the play right here. Julius tries to go inside. Steve Mix, you can see him right now, is inside the lane to pass to Bibby wide open. Unfortunately, they saw Mix in there too long. Julius serving on his approach pass to the takeoff. 
about 12 feet from the basket. Look at him right up and over, Gross. There's the man I'd pick in the slam dunk contest, I'll tell you that, Bryce. Hillman and McNeil <laughs> live at halftime, and Dave Twardzik has checked into the game to try and change the tempo. Portland, 10 of 16, 62%. Philly, 12 of 19, 63%. Neal out there with Twardzik. Twardzik with control. Bibby goes with him, and a foul is called as Twardzik began his assault on the hoop. Dave Twardzik, man, so instrumental in the last three victories for the Portland Blazers. Coming into the game, immediately creating some opportunities here. Goes to the foul line as the Sixers pick up their 15 foul. The Blazers only have one, Brent. And Rick, that's the first foul on Henry Bibby. At halftime, besides slam dunk, a report from the Kemper Open. That final round coming your way live immediately after this game. It's very interesting. He's such a great shooter from the outside, yet he's only shooting 68% from the free throw line. Very surprising statistic. Three points. 76er lead, 26-23. Lloyd three is there. Hollins takes in. Lloyd Neal comes with McGinnis. Lucas taking a break. Took that blow in the back of the neck. He'll be back. Whistle as there was contact underneath. Twardzik was muscling, trying to keep someone out. That still doesn't hurt them, Brent. It was before the two-minute mark, so it's only the second foul. Let's watch it now. There he is right there. You see him with the left hand. Grabbing on to Henry Bibby, picking up the foul. McGinnis shoots the air ball, gross outlet, and it's Torsic who's created it for Ramsey. Oh, missed the layup. Missed it. Back come the 76ers. Torsic was free. Nix and Torsic are down. Walton cleans it up. Now they're both back up. Hollins down. Here's Neal. Neal up on top of Mix. So Lloyd Neal, the man who's been coming off the bench and giving a big lift to the Portland Blazers, does it again. 1.76er lead. Mix up over Gross. Walton still another rebound, averaging 18 a game in this series. Collins cut off as the 76ers back. Walton is down. Doug Collins will be back. Collins! And Walton got over and got it away with a hand on it, and Bibby also battling for it. 76ers save it, and it was the hustle of Henry Bibby. Collins checks his left shoulder for the pick. Three goes to the mix pick. On the switch, it's Gross with him. Here's Mix battling inside. Walton came over to the top for the defensive block. Hollins is in the middle. It's three on three. Turns around on three. Four field goals. Did you see Hollins get around him? It was almost quick. That was some play by Lionel Hollins. Just great individual effort on that one. As the Blazers go up by a point. 45 seconds, first quarter. Game six. Portland leading in the series 3-2. Darrell Dawkins, who's not been as active as Caldwell Jones, goes to McGinnis. Neal was there. Lloyd Neal fouled him. Maurice Lucas and Doug Collins check back in. And I think if there has been a difference in the Philadelphia attack right now, it is that Darrell Dawkins has not been handling the ball as much as Caldwell Jones was. Bill Walton now will take his break at the end of the first quarter. Yes, Brent, but they are being much more aggressive, both offensively and defensively, and that's the big reason why they are right in this basketball game. Rick, right now for Portland, we've got Gross, Hollins, Lucas, Torchick, and Neal. For Philadelphia, McInnes missed the free throw. That puts him under 500 for the series. Hollins, Dawkins, free and mix. 37 seconds, tied at 27. And McInnes missed the big one that would have tied it at 53 in the Spectrum in game five. Last 30 seconds. Philadelphia get a shot. McGinnis tried to steal. Lucas looking for the open man. Throws up over the Off loose ball. Hollins. Hollins goes across to Maurice Lucas. Mix is there. They should hold it for the last shot, Brent. Three-second three violation. That is the third three-second violation. We did not have a single three-second violation in game five in Philly. 18 seconds. Powers and O'Donnell, the main referees, the alternate, Daryl Garrison sitting over at the table. Last shot time for Philadelphia. And finally, we've got one cooking where both teams are playing well. Been a screen, screen series so far. Free off iron, battle underneath. Neal's got it. Last three seconds, they must hurry. Lucas will throw it up. The end of the first quarter. And Rick can't get any better than what we've just seen so far. You can hear the crowd. It's tied at 27. For $15,000, live at halftime, slam dunk finals. Larry McNeil on the left. 
Darnell Hillman on the right. Yesterday, Rick, Larry McNeil's son, Larry Jr., celebrated his seventh birthday, and Larry was down in the dumps because he wasn't home to help the young man celebrate. So happy birthday to Larry McNeil Jr. from all of us. Tied at 27, second quarter. And we've got some basketball game, Brent, as you pointed out, both teams playing very good basketball at this juncture. This should be one fine game all the way through. Portland hit 57%, Philadelphia 50 in that first quarter. Lucas on McGinnis, loose ball. It'll come away with the Blazers and a chance to go ahead. It's two on one, Davis is free on the wing. Davis to the basket, and here's Porzik, the trail man. Hit by Dawkins, foul is called. Dawkins reaches down and helps Dave Porzik hold Dominion to his feet. That was actually good defense by Darrell Dawkins. Uh, he did a heck of a job of stopping an easy basket on that play. Porzik did, a, I gave you. Porzik did a good job of drawing the foul when Dawkins had committed himself trying to block the shot by Davis. This would put Portland in the lead by a single point. Wilton will be back soon. He's over on the bench. Resting that tender left knee. He strained it just a bit in game five. And so far, I've seen no evidence that it's tightened up here today. Philadelphia has just attacked him differently than they did in five. McGinnis up over towards it that time. So he had nine. Now give him 11 points. Four field goals and a free throw in that first quarter. McGinnis snapping out of that slump. Lucas looks in and goes Neal. Dawkins there. And towards it cuts off pretty. There's that great execution again. This time it was Lloyd Neal playing the role of Phil Walton, but they still execute the same play, and the other men have got to get up on the defense to not allow those easy cuts. Putting the Blazers up by a point, and Bibby will come back. They've got to watch Torchick so carefully. So intelligent. Dawkins on the drive, run it inside. Count the basket, and the crowd can't believe it. Crowd thought that Daryl Dawkins traveled, Rick. There's the play again right there. He puts it on the floor. There's no walk. Lloyd Neal running over. You can see him put his body underneath, make contact down low. That's where the foul was. The people here didn't see him hit him with his arm, so they didn't think it was a foul. And Walton will be back soon, I am sure. Missed the free throw. Torchick off to Davis. Lucas and Neal, the two big men for Ramsey. And Neal can shoot outside. Boy, Neal again, Brent. He's scoring points. He's passing the ball, giving Bill Walton a little extra rest. Jack Ramsey's going to take advantage of that. You can rest assured. Coming back from knee surgery this year. Irving and Gross came right up with him, and the doctor went to the glass. 76 is up by a point. We go seesawing back and forth. Davis Collins went down. Block and foul is called on Doug Collins. Second team foul on the Sixers. Interestingly enough, Brent, George McGinnis is breaking out of a slump, but Doug Collins and Julius Irving have not been scoring that many points either. Doug Collins especially. You have to get three people involved for the, for the Sixers to be able to win this game, I believe. They've only been having two. Blazers will try to regain it right now. Slam dunk finals live at halftime. Oh. it going in on Bibby. And offense is the call. It'll go to the 76ers, and now you see perfectly why Bibby was brought back. Here's the play right here. He makes his drive right there, right there. He dips his left shoulder to Henry Bibby, who had good position. That's a good call by Jake O'Donnell. Bill Walt looking on. McGinnis. Lucas cleaned it up. One shot that time for the 76ers. Walton still resting and watching. Gross outside. Bobby Gross has really caused some problems with this Philadelphia defense. They do not expect him to score this well. Now Philadelphia will try to regain it. And Irving does with 9.46. And that's the signal. Here he comes. The captain of the Portland Trailblazers. And the man who is the most responsible for what this team has accomplished this year. Neal coming in. Dawkins right with him. Off comes McGinnis. It was Daryl Dawkins' defense that did it. Debbie on the drive. And they've turned it over as he double dribbled. And here he comes. At the same time, a timeout will be called here in the Portland Memorial Coliseum. I get a chance to remind you. Slam dunk finals live at halftime. The final round. The Kemper Open right after this game. 
Larry Weinberg, the boss of the Portland Trail Blazers, just off to my left enjoying the action. His counterpart, Fitz Dixon, not here. It's his 25th wedding anniversary. So congratulations to Mr. and Mrs. Dixon. Walton goes now to Lucas, who is left alone. McGinnis wasn't out and missed the shot. Inside Hollins from the loose ball. He came up and put it in. An opportunity shot by Hollins, who was in the right spot. Both teams, Brent, still smoking, shooting 75 and 80 percent so far in the second quarter. Unbelievable start to the sixth game. Blazers up by a point. It bounced off of Dawkins on the turnover. Taken away by Bibby, and Ramsey Furious wanted the foul. Irving came up on Walton. Drew the foul and hit the field goal. Ramsey can't believe it. He wanted to foul down here at the other end. He thought for sure that Bibby had created the foul, but instead at the other end, Walton picks up his first. And Jake O'Donnell telling Ramsey and McKinney to get back. A warning. Jake O'Donnell is warning. Ramsey turns around. There's that play right here. The good steal by Bibby. They thought the foul should have been in the backcourt when Henry Bibby, I mean, when uh, Doug Collins was running alongside Hollins and bumping him. But that was a great play by Julius Irving on uh, Bill Walton. A two point Philadelphia lead, 38 36. Eight minutes and 50 seconds left in the first half. Dawkins goes with Walton. McGinnis giving Lucas plenty of room, and they sandwich Walton. They don't want him wheeling. McGinnis goes down and gets up. Hollins outside. But Gross got the rebound. They didn't seal Bobby off. Good play by Bobby Gross. Now it's McGinnis quickly past Hollins, and Lucas is there, and George comes up. He pulled up a little too quickly when he saw Walton. Off now to Hollins. It's three on two. Collins and Bibby are back. They'll go to Hollins. They try to Great. split the defense. Hollins from the right baseline is off. Irving with control. Off quickly to McGinnis. Rose gets back and will be all even. Here comes Irving. And Steve Mix will be checking back in with eight minutes approximately left first half. Tied. Irving. Walton challenges. Walton stays in. Davis. Two blocks already for Big Bill. Davis comes. Cuts on Bibby. Goes to the hoop. Bill Walton keying in again, making a great block on Julius Irving. Blaze is getting the fast break off of the block. Steve Mix waiting. 76 is down by two. Come right back. What a magnificent first half we have had here in Portland. Both teams at the top of their game. Philly must win to force the seventh game Wednesday night. McGinnis up outside. McGinnis has tied it. Seven minutes and 30 seconds to go. Davis across the timeline for Portland. Collins there. Look at that quickness on Johnny Davis. Lucas now. Irving tried to come in behind him that time and fouled him. So Julius reaching in behind him on the dribble hooked him. It's only his first foul, second team foul. Here's the play here. Davis pass out to Hollins. Hollins over. On the fake, Julius gets caught coming out a little bit when he reaches around, catches him on the arm. Three team fouls, excuse me, on the Sixers right now. Two on the Blazers. Maurice Lucas having a difficult time shooting. George McGinnis getting his shot back, but Doug Collins has been a non-enemy right now. Brady's not even handling the ball on offense. And they have taken him out of the game, Rick. Bibby and three are the guards for Gene Shue. Davis with that great quickness looking for the pass and it was Steve Mix who stood there in the lane and got a hand on it and it'll go now to Portland. You can watch the defensive setup. Excellent defense by Steve Mix. Bobby Gross will look. It's Walton he wants. Walton comes up on Daryl Dawkins and puts it in. So Walton knows now he's going to have to pick up his offensive production. He's in a shootout. It's a two-point blazer lead. In game five in the second half, Walton was content to play some great defensive rebound. He knows just what you have to do. Irving goes left to mix. Here's Free. Hollins with him. Free comes up. Double team, and there's a foul. He was swinging off. Offensive foul is the call against Free, who swung into Lionel Hollins. There's the play right here. There you see Free. Good position by Hollins. Just a jump. Let's see the right arm. Catch Collins right in the chin. Offensive foul on Lloyd Free. A man who will enjoy the action today no matter who wins. Commissioner Lawrence O'Brien and his wife watching here directly behind us. And of course, if Portland wins, he'll present his brand new trophy that he is so proud of to the Portland Trail Blazers. They need one victory to wrap it up. Game seven will be Wednesday night as Hollins squeezes and hits 44-40. Blazers and Hollins has hit four shots outside. For Philadelphia, McGinnis is six of 11. 
Portland 19 rebounds, Philadelphia 13. Total for Hollins, 12 points. Rose eyes the doctor. Walton also watching him. And it was Hollins with a defensive move. He read the pass. He comes back on Nix. And Lucas follows and crashes it down. play as Hollis makes another great steal goes in misses the shot Lucas follows two points live at halftime slam dunk Darnell Hillman just won the toss in the locker room he'll go second behind Larry on the deal here 558 to go first half the Blazers have run off six straight Billy now trying to respond Harvey Cutchings checks in misses the shot knocked away by Mix as Walton had control the doctor went over to the corner and chased it down. And was stepping out of bounds. So it'll go to Portland. Now they run off six in a row. And they can bust the game wide open. Here's the play right here. Julius and Lucas going for the ball. Julius knocks it away right there. He said Julius was out of bounds when he touched the ball last. The call by Jake O'Donnell. McGinnis with 13 points is back. Harvey catchings playing his first critical moments in this series so far. He draws Walton. Trying to front him to the left side. Walton pressuring off. Gross goes, catching switches. And Gross comes up over the top. Now that's eight straight. And contact is at stake for Philly. With this crowd, it can get awfully emotional here. Gene Chu and the 76ers realize this is critical moment number one. McGinnis with Lucas. McGinnis on the drive. Walton there on the double team. Free ball off from the Blazers. A chance for 10 straight. Hollins muscling in. He's got it. Lionel Hollins has been the one on the top of the Lionel Hollins just playing a super game. He did not play that well in Philadelphia in the first two games. And he's come back. You see the play right there. He was fouled from behind by Freeze. He went by, makes a tough shot. Chance of the three-point play. And I'd have to say that the two key men, three key men for Portland right now are Bill Walton, Lionel Hollins and Bobby Gross. 12 for Gross and 14 for Hollins right now. And Walton continues to dominate defensively on the boards. Catching's off. With that 10-point run, it's 50 to 40 right now. And here is still another timeout. Gene Shu does not want to let this game get out of reach right now. He's got to settle his team down. They're not playing with the same aggressiveness and running their patterns. They're not getting that penalty. Usually that man is Bill Walton. 10-point run at 50, 40, and 5.06 left. They come at you so quickly, and they are so lethal when they get it working. Up comes the doctor who responds. Back to eight come the 76ers. Collins, Bibby, McGinnis, Catchings, and Irving on the floor for Shue. McGinnis staying with Lucas. Catchings out on Walton. Here's the pass to Davis, who came up on it and got it down. The defense was there. Good effort by Davis. Get a signals. He's on the weak side. Is Collins trying to get something going? Walton is there on the double team defensively. Ball goes to Portland. So the big factor, I think, right now for Philadelphia is that they're only getting the scoring from Irving and McGinnis. Doug Collins is not getting any points for them. And catching using muscle, they go to the lob behind him on Walton, who drew the foul and hit the field goal. And I want to tell you, Harvey Catchings did everything but tackle him that time. Let's watch the play here. There's the lob pass by Gross. Catchings was fronting him. The weak side help. The man on the other side of the floor, McGinnis, is a little late getting there. Walton catches the ball. You see the reaction from Bill Walton. There's another angle of it. There's the pass. You see George is a little late getting there. There's the foul by George. Basket by Bill. That's where weak side defense is so important. If McGinnis had gotten there a step sooner, he would have possibly drawn an offensive foul on Bill Walton. Jones with three fouls checks in. Catchings goes out. Trainer Al Domenico is tending to Doug Collins near midcourt. Brent, I just do not know how the Portland Blazers to keep up this pace. They're shooting over 60% for this basketball game, and they're showing no signs of letting up. Meanwhile, Philadelphia is shooting almost 55%. So the injury timeout for guard Doug Collins, who took a blow. Remember, he was punched by Daryl Dawkins. Steve Mix on the Philly bench. 
Bill Walton. Look at his eyes, Brent. He has come to play as he has all playoff long. As a matter of fact, all season long. Remember the Blazers were 5 and 12 this year in the 17 games that he missed. Here's Irving giving it up to Jones who came into the basket. No basket. Offensive foul is called. That's four fouls on Caldwell Jones. Here yeah, we'll take a look at it again. Julius makes the nice pass. There's the play. Looks like Lionel Hollins may have moved under after the man that committed himself catching. Questionable. A 13-point Blazer lead. Gross gets away, but McGinnis comes over on him. Here is Davis. Hollins sticks out. Now it's Hollins. Jones playing with those four fouls. With five seconds on the shot clock, Hollins missed outside. McGinnis and Lucas went for it. There was a whistle. Lucas on the loose ball foul, and the ball goes over to Philadelphia. Two fouls on Maurice. Three team fouls. Brent Sixers are in the bonus again. So both quarters, Philadelphia in the bonus. Horton wasn't. Three forwards on the floor as Joe Bryant replaces Caldwell Jones. It'll be Bryant, McGinnis, and Irving. And Walton takes McGinnis in this situation. McGinnis outside. Davis off. Loose ball foul is the call. Bryant was coming across on him. There's where that penalty situation can hurt you so desperately, so badly, I mean, because with 321 to go, a little little foul like that would have just been a ball out of bounds. And when you're trailing by 13 points, those fouls can really hurt in this situation. But again, Brent, the last shots again coming from the outside that all of a sudden Portland's just locked that middle up. They're just not letting him come in there. Live at halftime, slam dunk finals. Larry McNeil and Darnell Hillman. Lloyd Free watching from Gene Shue's bench. We'll also have a live report from the Kemper Open in the final round coming up immediately after this game. In Charlotte, North Carolina, 57 to 42. 318 left in the first half. That run of 10 busted it open. Irving up on Gross. McGinnis with an offense and Walton rejected it. McGinnis and Walton crash to the floor. Both are fine. Here is Davis again. It was Walton at that defensive end. Davis missed the wide open man, Lionel Hollins, to his left that time. He forced up a tough shot. Game six with Portland leading three victories, two, and Joe Bryant outside. Bryant brought some enthusiasm when he came into game five late in the spectrum. 57-44. 13-point difference. Two minutes and 40 seconds left first half. Walton with the signal. He'll be the wheel horse. Davis goes his side, and now he pops out to handle it. Looks for the cutter. Not good movement that time. Throws from the corner. Here's Davis on the other side. Bibby came in behind and hooked him and fouled him. So Two again, fouls. that penalty situation plaguing the Sixers. They get to take a tough shot. The ball comes off. They can't get that out. That defensive rebound. As you see the play right there, with Bibby coming in, picking up the foul. Davis to the line. One plus the penalty for two. Here is Johnny Davis, who was forced into Jack Ramsey's starting lineup back in the Denver series when Dave Twardzik injured an ankle. He stayed there as the Blazers swept away Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and the Los Angeles Lakers. Then the finals began. Twardzik returned, and Davis has remained the starter. 59-44, and it has given Jack Ramsey a potent weapon off the bench. Inside pass is a good one from Bryant to Irving. That's the type of plays that they need to get. Get inside, get those easy baskets, stop shooting from the outside. Walton and McGinnis came out and stole it. McGinnis defended him, Walton coming back, and George laid it in. Walton not going for the foul, an 11-point Portland lead. Content to trail him home that time, and 155 left in the first. McGinnis waits now. He's giving up a lot of inches to Bill. Here's Walton rolling off. McGinnis has switched out. No one picked him up for the weak side. The gamble by Julius Irving hurt them that time. Julius roaring to the basket, came up in Walton's face, and Walton said, had to be offense. And Julius is unbelievable in a wide open situation. I have never seen anybody be able to do the things that he could do. Here we go again. Gross takes a shot at him. Walton goes up. Just look at this. Walton was complaining about his left hand. As you see, he hit him in the head with the ball. But there was contact anyway. Here we go again with the steal. Now let's just watch the doctor operate. There he goes. Takes off up and over. Injury timeout for Walton. Trainer Ron Culp is off to my left. Walton bending down. 
took that blow, which you saw. Great in a wide open situation, he plays a game that I don't think anybody's ever played before. There's the leaderboard. Weisskopf, Burns, Rogers, Tewell tied at the top, and we'll have a live update at halftime. Along with the finals of the slam dunk, McNeil and Hillman, 135. It's an 11 point Blazer lead. There's the cutter. It's Hollins this time. Travel. Twartzik reports in. Well, they got the man open on the cut, so the defense has still got to shore itself up. If Hollins had not walked with the ball, he was going to have an easy shot inside. Calhoun returns. Once again, Brent, an important minute and 28 seconds. If the Sixers can play good defense, score a couple baskets, they can get this lead back down under 10 points, still be within range. If not, and Portland runs off four or six on them, they could be in big trouble. 11-point difference right now. Irving inside. It's the doctor scoring and coming to the line. The magnificence of Julius Irving. Could you ask for two better athletes than Julius Irving and Bill Walton on the floor at the same time? Now you see the doctor just doing it all on his own. Tremendous individual effort. And he has been just incredible in this playoff series. He's been the most consistent performer for the Philadelphia team. It's the three-point play. Now he has scored 20 points here in the first half. Calhoun's first foul against Irving. He's with control, and here's Lucas waiting. Bryant out on him. Bryant stays with him, and the foul is called. Joe Bryant a little too aggressive, his second. Bryant does not give away that inch of height that George McGinnis does when he's matched against Lucas. So for Julius Irving, four points in the first quarter, Rickon in 16 here in the second. Well, this man comes to play every time he steps out there on the floor. And they talk about all the money that that man makes, but if anybody in this game earns what he's being paid, it's Julius serving. Such an attraction, Rick, wherever he goes around the league. I have to honestly say, Brendan, of all the players in the league, he's the one guy I would pay to go see play. And I think I would pay to see a team like Portland play the way they have in the playoffs so far. So unselfish. 63-53 and one minute. Irving wants it to come through McGinnis. Walton out on him. Now the Julius show goes outside and Walton rolled away from McGinnis and controls still another rebound. So the three forwards on the floor for Gene Shue as we come to the end of the first half. Hollins pull up. Walton at the offensive end. Offensive rebounds now hurting the Sixers badly. As we'll take a look at Bill Walton on this play. Lionel Hollins takes a jump. Look how he establishes a good inside position. He's actually being held there by McGinnis. They didn't call that foul. He gets the offensive rebound, goes up, and Julius catches him on the arm. He will go to the line. Three chances to make two. And two fouls on Irving. Robin Jones waiting to check back in. Walton will get a break here at the end of the second quarter. Again, though, Brent Julius Irving having to play a lot of time, a very fast-paced game. Will it have an effect on him in the second half? They need him desperately, and Doug Collins still the unheard from man in this basketball game. Look at the concentration. 12-point lead. 35 seconds. Now we're there with the 35. I tried to cheat on the director and it didn't work. Here's Irving and Twartzik with him. And now Bibby outside the left corner. Hollins down, 25. Twartzik's got an open man on the right wing. Back to Twartzik from Lucas and Bibby had flowed in. Portland sets up Walton, comes back. Loose ball. Hollins has got Calhoun to the basket. Listen to them in Portland. This is the major sports franchise in this city. And they are closing in on their first world championship. And everything has come to a standstill in Portland. Gene Chu trying to get Philadelphia back in and enforce the seventh game. Sparky Calhoun picking up the foul, trying to go for the steal. Gene Chu looking on very, very anxiously to see what's going to happen in the second half. Look at that look of concern on his face. Jack McMahon, Philadelphia assistant. Six seconds left. 67-53. There goes Walton off for a round of applause as Irving hits the free throw. And that's 21 points for the doctor. 
72. Philadelphia will try to smother the ball, but they go along to Robin Jones. Jones up with the jump shot. Collins off last second. They did not get it off in time. The end of the first half, and at halftime, we'll have live a report from the Kemper Open, and also Larry McNeil and Darnell Hillman, finals of the slam dunk. Time for the slam dunk final, and let's go to Don Cricky. Don? Thank you, Brent. Basically, how the slam dunk works, if you've been with us throughout the season, each player will get five slam dunk attempts. For everyone that's good, it's worth two points. And the biggest determinant in scoring will come from a three-man panel of judges who you'll meet shortly. The more difficult, the more artistic the slam dunk attempts, the more style points they get. A perfect score would be 40. Representing the Golden State Warriors, here is six-foot-nine-inch Larry McNeil out of Marquette University. And his competition today from the Indiana Pacers, more recently traded to the New York Nets, from San Jose State, Darnell Hillman. And now let's meet our three-man panel of judges. On the right is Mendy Rudolph, CBS basketball analyst, a man who refereed over 2,000 NBA games. Next to him, a member of 10 world championship teams with the Boston Celtics, Sam Jones. And nationally known basketball writer Larry Bortstein of Denver, Colorado is our third judge. We had a toss of a coin. Darnell Hillman won the toss. He elected to go second, so Larry McNeil will lead it off with a $15,000 first prize on the line. Well, Larry McNeil is one for one. It is most important they make all five because in many of the competitions leading up to this, a missed shot has cost them. Larry McNeil is two for two with three slam dunk attempts to go. Three for three, there are five designated spots on the floor. You see Larry going to a fourth, they can pick him in any order. That'll grade high on style points, a timing slam dunk, and Larry McNeil got all of it. So he gets 10 points on scoring, and we'll watch him in slow motion now. Here comes Larry McNeil, who played with Maurice Lucas at Marquette. Hammering it down with the left hand. We'll watch him again now in slow motion as our judges break down the style points. He's already attained 10 points on scoring. And here we are. As we look at the judges, 8-5, 8-5, and 8-5, a total of 25.5, a total of 35.5 for Larry McNeil, and that's what Darnell Hillman has to shoot at now. $15,000 on the line. Dr. Duncan, Indiana, from San Jose State, 6'9", 215-pound, Darnell Hillman. All of them. All of them. Darnell is now three for three. Henry's shooting at 35.5, and Larry McNeil made all five of his attempts. Second attempt. Kind of a 
double clutch and Darnell Hillman. Here he comes on a third attempt. They're waiting at style point breakdown. All right, let's see what the judges score on Darnell Hillman. Eight, five, nine, five, and nine. So Darnell Hillman edges out Larry McNeil for the $15,000 first prize. And we're going to meet our champion and our runner-up right now. Darnell. We had some tough people to beat Darnell along the way. You beat Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Richard Washington, among others. Moses Malone, congratulations. Thank you, Don. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you to my family for standing behind me and helping me get through this little ordeal. Uh, I had a little work to do, and I went out and did it. And I'm happy about it. You got, some, you got some money coming in the mail. Congratulations, Darnell. <laughs> All right, thank you. Darnell Hillman, now let's go to Brent Musburger. Don, tell uh, Darnell to hold up. I got Julia serving. I want the winner. <laughs> Rick, you and Steve Jones get some money, and let's get the doctor out there against Darnell. We'll be back in just a moment. Exciting stuff this afternoon. Johnny Davis right then. He came inside off a quick pass. Got the ball here. You get Philadelphia with some of the more spectacular stuff. Caldwell Jones with a big stuff right there. Coming back again, Philadelphia with better ball movement in the first quarter than they've had. And Steve Mix hits a jumper from the outside. Julius Irving in a foot race, and he'll show you something about slingshots. He just loads up here, takes off, and he throws it right over Bobby Gross, and that's a great play. Portland knows a little bit about give and go. Right there, Bobby Gross down the middle. Knocked Steve Mix right out of the way. And back again, another give-and-go. Dave towards it coming down the same way. You'd think Philadelphia would learn as they leave that middle open time and time again. Again, a live play into Walton. He backs out, a great live, and he looks over for a little help, and he gets it. And last again, Irving with an open face stuff right as for sure. Everybody's happy to see him come out of his slump, except the Portland fans. As we take a look at the statistics, Steve, we can see that both teams moving the ball, as you pointed, assists 16 apiece. But look at those rebounds right now. Of course, again, offensive rebounds. The Blazers have been able to get those offensive rebounds because they've been able to move the ball a little bit better. Philadelphia's gotten more this game than they had last, but they're going to have to shut Portland down by being more aggressive offensively and defensively. We'll take a look at the scoring right now. As we pointed out, two men, Irving and McGinnis, 22-15. The rest of them, not really a big factor. But on the Portland side of that scoreboard, let's take a look at that, Steve. What do we have here? Well, they've had balance all year long, and I think Hollins is on the top with 14. Walton, Johnny Davis, and Bobby Gross are right behind with 12 and 13. I think, you know, again, this is what they've had all year long, and they're going to look to do the same thing. Philadelphia, they're, if they're going to go with two players, they're going to have to get them more shots. They're going to have to just play a tougher game. Well, thanks a lot, Steve. Brent, let's get ready for this great second half that I think we're going to have. Philadelphia facing elimination if they cannot come back and pull this one out. In that second quarter, with these fans urging them on, the Trailblazers exploded for 40 points. That is their fourth 40-point quarter in this series so far. And of those 40 points, Brent, they had 10 layups. Irving and Walton rejected, and Gross was out of bounds when he touched it. Another block by Big Bill. There's that one-man defense, plus one. Bill Walton being a big factor offensively, Brent, in the first half. He's handled the ball 23 times. They are getting the ball into Walton. Philly was able to shut that off in the first two basketball games, but Portland's made adjustments, and Bill is getting the ball with regularity. Philadelphia's lineup, Irving, Jones, Collins, Bibby, McGinnis. For Portland, it's Lucas, Davis, Walton, Gross, and Holland. <laughs> Lucas got there strongly. And the crowd roars Luke in Portland. Jones with four fouls playing Walton. Lucas to the screenshot. Jones rolled off outlet. Now remember, Collins was held to two points in that first half. Looking basket. Miss on the drive, so the frustration continues. Loose ball, McGinnis back. Comes up and hits it. George McGinnis with his most effective offensive performance so far. 17 points. Walton and Lucas collide at the top. Rose finally comes around, and Bibby has switched off on him. Julius is left with Hollins. Hollins takes the dock inside and went to the right hand. Off on the fly. Bibby with Collins ahead of him. Now McGinnis on the right. Collins again to the basket. Charged into Davis. Crowd and coaches both want charging call. Doug Collins 
scores his second basket of the game. It's 67 59. Philadelphia doing what they have to do jump on them early, get back in this game. Lucas driving. Walton. Walton regains it. 24 minutes for a championship for Portland. Portland getting inside. McGinnis up into Lucas. Offensive foul is the call. Take the play right here. Here's George. Makes the dribble. Crossed over to the left. Now watch now. He will initiate the contact with this move right here. The next step jumps in. Jumps into Maurice Lucas. Two fouls on McGinnis. Richie Powers and Gene Shue arguing. Shue being restrained. Joe Bryant talking to him. Richie walks away. Now at the other side, Ramsey is being yanked back by O'Donnell. Down in his familiar spot. You know those slacks Jack Ramsey wearing today? Those are the kind that you could throw in a shower and not worry about how they would come out. And that's how confident this franchise is today. They dressed accordingly. Collins is there with Davis. Walton out. Lucas was down underneath. Maurice tried to get off the floor by scooting along the ground when he was laying down in the three-second area, but even if you go off the floor, if you're still inside that lane area, it counts as three seconds. You must go out to the perimeter, to the outside of the lane. Lucas pointing to the wet spot where he went down, Rick. Jeff wiping it up. Pressure by Davis on Bibby. A 10-point Portland lead. Jones picks off Bibby's man and tries to get him behind Walton, and Walton goes and seals. Irving's there on the challenge against Walton. Out of bounds, it'll go to Portland. Doctor got hit in the mouth on that play. He's looking for the foul, but boy, there's a lot of aggressiveness being taking place out here right now, and the officials are going to have to jump on things so they don't get out of hand. Here's Hollins. Puts up the left-hander, which is off, and then runs it down the corner. He knew he missed that when he went right after it. Ross to Walton. Davis with a screen for Bill. The smallest man gives the biggest man on the Portland team the pick. And it's two points for the Blazers. 71-59 and 9-29. Shades of Green Bay, Wisconsin in 1961 when Vince Lombardi and a football team stuck the championship in a small town. Well, there's a play that happens so often in the game of basketball. You allow the man to come from the weak side of the floor. That's the side opposite of where the ball is. We see it here. And beat your man to the basketball. McGinnis beats Lucas over. Goes up for the shot. Lucas goes up. Fouls him on the arm. Your defense in this situation must play between the ball and the man and not allow him to beat you to the ball. After the fifth game in Philadelphia... The Portland Trail Blazers wound their way home and finally got here at 4.30 in the morning. 4,500 fans had waited up all night to greet them at the airport. The plane was an hour late because it was forced to land in Billings, Montana and take on a new load of fuel, and those fans stayed right there. There was not a bottle of beer or a milkshake to be had at that airport the next morning. Nine minutes and 18 seconds left quarter number three. A 10-point difference. Philadelphia must win to force game number seven Wednesday night in the spectrum. Right after this sixth game, the final round of the Kemper Open from Charlotte, North Carolina. Walton into Hollins, who got McGinnis up in the air, but missed the shot. And they stay with it. The attendance I am handed is 12,951. There are at least 3,000 others who are unaccounted for carrying press cameras. Bibby in and out. Walton looks out. Left, leads to Davis. I don't think he can run this one down. Ball is a little bit too far to the sideline. Even with the speed Davis had, he could not get to it quick enough. They have rallied around the basketball team in Portland, Oregon, as Collins comes into Walton and offensive foul is called. So Doug Collins still having his difficulty. Let's watch his left arm here because that's what the foul is called for. Watch that left arm. There it is. You see him swinging that left arm to the left. 12-point lead. Crisis time nearing for the 76ers. Off they come. Here's Bibby. It's three on one. McGinnis comes to the basket strongly with his best offensive showing. 21 points in this sixth game. Gross open. Excellent 
pass by Lucas. Defensive breakdown again by Philadelphia, just not watching man-ball relationship. Lucas there with McGinnis, and it's Collins. Trying to shoot his way out of this slump. Here's Davis back quickly. Two guards having a fine game for Jack Ramsey offensively. Walton gets Jones up, turns around. Gross regains it, and here's Walton. They bring it in through the center on that motion. Looks Cutter, it's Lucas in behind McGinnis. Again, this time it was Elise Lucas coming from the weak side. He just pulled the same thing George did to him. Eight points for Lucas. Goes with the doctor, double team Walton. So they go to Jones, who had to be open with Walton out there helping on Irving. 12 point lead by Portland. A little difference in this second half, friend. Both teams only shooting 30 some odd percent so far in the third quarter. McGinnis there with Lucas. Double team with Irving Davis. McGinnis with position. Lucas came in behind and knocked it out of bounds. Steve Mix will check in for Gene Shu. And with a timeout on the floor. Sixers are still in contact. They have not let the Blazers come out and jump off early in the third quarter like they've done in the last three ball games. They're right in there. They have a chance. They have gone on sale already. They were ready for today here in Portland. Game six. Taking away the home court advantage that Philadelphia possessed in the fifth game back in the spectrum. 12 points and 6 minutes and 48 seconds for the third quarter. Lucas was there on mix and the foul called as he hopped out on him. And for Lucas, that's his fourth foul. Julius Irving has not scored here in the second half so far. And Walton telling Lucas to shake it off and get back into the flow. Mix bouncing off and Lucas was there on the turnover. It's a steal by the dock. Walton there, Irving there, they meet at the top. Well, that's just two great players going against one another, and Julius won that battle. 6-22, 77-67. Kemper open, final round next. Lucas with Mix's hand right in his face, fading away, made it 12. Collins, back to Bibby. For the 76ers, a perimeter offense. Now Bibby slips in and Collins goes outside. Still in his slump. Collins looking. McGinnis will check back in. Julius is tired, Brent. He's not getting back down on defense very quickly at all. Here's the play through Walton. Waits for the cutter. He'll screen for Lucas. Short. There was a whistle. Now, I believe Ramsey wants a timeout. Yes, he does. But they cannot have it right now because the ball belongs to the Philadelphia 76ers. But Ramsey has told the team that he wants a timeout. It's 79 67. He could not have it in that situation. Mix going to the left hand, Irving. Bibby left alone outside. So Davis was away from him. Julius doing everything, picking up assists. That time they double teamed him. Julius knows when he's got two people on him, there's going to be somebody else open on the floor. He found the open man. Good opportunity shot by Bibby. Cut the lead back down to 10. Torzik checks in for the Portland Trailblazers with 5.06 to go in the third. Final round of the Kemper Open coming up next. Torzik glides the baseline. McGinnis had jumped over on him. Collins runs it down. Philadelphia trailing by 10. Looking for that surge now. McGinnis left perimeter. Makes it eight. 
4.45. And now listen to the crowd. They'll urge the Blazers back into it. It's the home court advantage. Collins off to Schwarzer. He'll take the shot. It's 10 again. Lloyd Free gets ready to report. Jones stationary off to the side. Walton with a hand there, watching the middle carefully. Shot clock being used up by Philly. It's a factor, and Collins is deep in the corner. McGinnis comes up, and there was a 24-second violation. And there was simply no movement, and listen now to the crowd. They played tough defense that time, Brent. First 24-second violation of the game. Collins goes out as free comes in. Philadelphia faced with the unenviable and very difficult task of playing catch-up basketball away from home. Trailing it by 10 and 3.55 left in the third. Lloyd Neal out there. McGinnis with him. Lucas out. Four fouls getting in place. Three-second violation. On the side, Philadelphia will put it in play. Wardzik and Hollins await Bibby and Free. Slumping Collins out right now. Neal there with McGinnis. Gross had it thrown right to him. That was just a bad pass right oh, there. Oh, right to Bobby Gross. The doctor wasn't there. Neal to the basket. Gross got a hand on it. Bobby Gross reached out, got a hand on the ball, and tapped it back in. Super individual effort by Bob Gross on that play. Very reminiscent of what Bill Walton did back here in second game in Portland. 12-point lead, three. McGinnis at the offensive end had come up and Neal and he squaring off briefly. How important the offensive boards are. Give a team a second opportunity and you really pay the price in this game. Three fouls Let's on Let's watch the Gross play. Here we go. The shot's going to come up here by Neal. It'll come off. Watch Gross come into your picture in the bottom right of your screen. Ball bounces off. Extends all the way. His arm is completely straight. He manages to get it there. Beautiful soft touch and control by Bob Gross. Make it 24 for McGinnis. By far his best showing. Game six, 83-72, an 11-point difference inside of three minutes left third quarter. Kemper open, final round is next. Neal maneuvering up in the air, goes to Gross, who comes up over Carl Rocho. Inside, he taps it. Outside, over the seven-footer. He thinks he's Julius Irving right now. There they are. Here they come again. Gross is on the right. Collins is on the left. You know who the hot hand is right now, and there he is trying to get it underneath. He tucked it from out of bounds, and Bobby Gross knew it. Sixers cannot get over Ang to set up, get a good shot. Not being too much for her. There's plenty of time to go. 76ers have scored 17 points this quarter. McGinnis has nine of them. Bree comes in, turns around with the jump shot. McGinnis with an offensive rebound wants the doctor. And Walton, with the outlet, was being challenged, and there was a whistle. Lloyd Free fouled Bill Walton, who is down on the floor. That's just adding insult to injury, actually, or compounding a problem. Lloyd Free, we'll watch the play. Here's Julius on the shot. Ball comes off. Bill Walton up there with that super timing, getting it right off the rim. Right there, Free hits him on the arm, picking up the backcourt foul. Three fouls on the Blazers on the team situation, the first for the 76ers. But Free took a difficult shot. We just got done talking about trying to come down and get a good shot. He comes down, takes a turnaround over two men, misses the shot, and then commits a backcourt foul. Are there any doubts left in the world of basketball about whether or not Bill Walton can play in the National Basketball Association? Call it vegetable power if you want. Call it Ian talent. Reese, Lucas, both Call vegetarians. Call it talent, Brent. Better word for it. Great talent. Two minutes left. 
third quarter, 86-72. Irving maneuvering underneath with Gross there, went to the left hand. It's only Julius' fourth point of this half. Went to Gross on the pass, even though Irving was there, and Walton took it back with the jump hook. McGinnis gave it up to Jones. He comes back with a jump hook. Caldwell Jones makes it 88-76. 12 points and 128. And still, it was that 10-point first in quarter number two. Richie Powers is calling a two-shot foul on George McGinnis for throwing an elbow at Dave Porzik. Jake O'Donnell walking over to step in between the two. I don't think Dave Porzik was going to challenge George McGinnis, so the reserve makes no need for that break. Walton receives an ovation. He'll go out, along with Bobby Gross also. Towards it still being played at that free throw line. That's his third miss so far from the line, I believe. And Rick, three fouls on McGinnis. Yes, he's only two for five from the free throw line. This man is a 60% field goal shooter. Oh, 89-76, a 13-point difference. 121. Calhoun will take Irving now. Porchick on the double team. A chance for a three-pointer. So Julius doing it by himself again. Trying to get this team back in. Held a little bit in check in the third quarter, but he's exploded now for four quick points. Chance for five. Picking up Porzik, 105, third quarter. Porzik got inside and traveled. But again, Porzik had the lane. He had the opening to the basket. If he had not walked with the basketball, he would have gotten into the hoop, creating problems for the Philadelphia defense. They have got to shut that middle off and try to make Porton go from the outside. 11-point difference for the 76ers. Irving. Now it is suddenly nine, and there's the magnificence of the doctor. Down goes free. He and Jones collided, and of course that rib cage, I believe, is bothering Lloyd free for just a moment here. Inside pass to Calhoun, and they get to the hoop. Back to 11. Irving forced one that time. That was one of the few bad shots that Julius has taken in this game, Brent. Goes back to Philadelphia. Crowd unhappy with it. Here they come. Inside and off of Robin Jones. On that play, that pass from Lloyd Neal was to Dave Towards it coming in the left side. And Robin Jones came in and kicked it out of bounds. With Walton watching for the sideline. And 19 seconds now towards 15. And 11 point Portland lead. Philly will try to cut it to nine as they go to the sideline at the end of three. Christian went three once here. Came up and drew the foul. Again, no ball movement. This is all one-on-one. -on -one. Free just taking the ball, backing in there. Sixers got a break on that type of play as Julius gets his first rest of this basketball game wisely by Gene Shue because they need him desperately in that fourth quarter. And he... Looked like he's a little tired in the last few games in the fourth quarter. Rick, that's his second rest. Didn't he play 21 minutes in the first half? I think they had Right, he came, they got him out there in the second quarter, right, for a few minutes. My mistake. But Julius is really working hard out there at both ends of the floor, and, and it takes his toll on you after a while. McGinnis, Jones, Free, Bryant, and Collins out there against Calhoun, Hollins, Torchick, Neal, and Jones for the last four seconds. Pick him up at midcourt. Collins motors pass. Comes up at the buzzer short. So it has come down to this. Portland leads Philadelphia. Three games to two. Twelve minutes for a championship. A fever in Portland. 
I've seen teams, the fans get up for a team in championship series, but nothing like what's taken place here in Portland before, Brent. I, it's incredible. A uh, city nearing its first world championship, its only major sports franchise, and how they have rallied around this group. The first year the Blazers have ever been in the playoffs. And here they are. McGinnis came in around behind Lucas. Gene Shue going with Joe Bryan again, trying to get some of that enthusiasm that he brought to the Sixers in the last game in that fourth quarter. Shot clock, time remaining. Blazers have hit 56%. Quarter number four begins, 91-82. Lucas and he Crowder. The 76ers stay calm and don't get caught up in this crowd right now and do what they have to do. They can climb in because there's plenty of time. Doug Collins with four points remains a very key man here. Bryant to the basket and he travels. Turnovers in this situation right now could be also costly to the Sixers. Davis, Torzik, Walton. Lucas and Gross. Irving will come back. Bryant with Gross. Davis at the top of the circle. McGinnis rebound. Off to Lloyd Free. Free comes up off the side of the glass. Portzik was there on him. Free drew the foul. Julius comes back in the ball game as Free goes to the line. Portzik picking up his fourth personal foul. Watch the play here. There goes Free going up for the shot. Towards it comes from the side. He caught him on the arm as he tried to get out of the way, and the official saw the contact. Lionel Hollins there as Portrick with four fouls goes out. Lloyd Free's third point. Julius Irving has scored 30. McGinnis 24. Collins only four. For the Blazers, 18 for Gross, 20 for Walton, 16 for Hollins, and 12 for Davis. Guinness is there with Lucas. Lucas puts it down short. Knocked away, and here come the 76ers, three on one. Now it's three on two. McGinnis holds inside. Irving at the glass. Tap back up. Free ball. And free racing against Davis. Lloyd free with control. Crowd wanting to foul. Lloyd free up over Bill Walton. Not there. McGinnis runs it down in the corner. Jones comes back. Lucas with a hand on McGinnis, and a foul is called. Maurice Lucas now has picked up five personal fouls. Here's the play right here. Maurice bumping him with the body, reaches in, hits him on the arm, fouled him twice before he got the first one called. 20-second injury timeout. Al Domenico out, tending to McGinnis. McGinnis kneeling down, hitting only 33% when he came into this sixth game. He has scored 24 points already. Brent, I'll tell you one thing. It has gotten very hot in this arena, and I just really wonder if it's going to get to the players in the pace of this ballgame. Just sitting here, I can just feel how humid it is. George may have just been trying to get a little rest there. It was a little hectic pace. People are standing all around the balcony. Every seat is full. Aisles fogged at the top. Jones looking in. Irving. Down on Gross. Jumper. 91 to 86, and it is five. And the 76ers have come down to the last 10 minutes saying, we are not out of this yet. They must win to force his seventh game Wednesday night. Jones is there. Walton crossed out a line of Hollins and proves his position on that jumper. <laughs> Quickly they go to the doctor with a long pass. Can't go from that corner because Gross and Lucas were there. Here's Lloyd three. That was a heck of a gamble in this situation, but they're right in it. That could have really hurt if he threw it away. Dennis outside and Walton with another rebound. Beat Caldwell Jones and here they come. They can make it nine. Davis and it's the doctor with him, and it's offensive foul call. Davis rolled in on the doctor. Julius with a great defensive play. 
As you see Davis going up, Julius goes up right there. Watch his left arm. He makes the block. He takes his left arm to knock the dock out of the way. Big play by Julius Irving. Noise level unbelievable in the Coliseum. 93, 86, and 922. Collins back in. Only foul is called. Caldwell Joe's being called. For a screen. Offensive foul. His fifth foul of this game. Sixers with no team fouls. Blazers with two. Jones there. Walton will have it run through him. Looks for the cutter. They clog the middle. So Walton takes it. And jump hook is off iron. Outlet to Collins. Back in the middle to Joe Bryant. It's three on two. Collins flies inside. Walton is there. And Doug Collins reversed on the other side. Back to five. Listen to the noise in here. 8.52. So close and yet so far when you're matched against the likes of Irving for Guinness. Collins outside. Doug is there. Collins is off. They can make it a three-point game. Not quitting. The moment of truth has come for Philadelphia and they are responding. Collins outside. Off iron. Lucas left alone. Not a good shot, Brent. Jack Ramsey wants a timeout. He doesn't like the way things are progressing right here, but this Philadelphia team is really hanging tough. They're working hard on both ends of the floor. They're doing good things out there. They've got themselves back in this basketball game, trailing by five with 8.26 to go. 